Hello and happy Friday. I'm Nancy from Nancy's Health and Wellness and Mindset Life Coaching. I am doing a live video today. Um, it's going to be a little bit quicker uh, than my last one probably, but I want to welcome you. I'm glad that you're here. I also want to welcome some new clients. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to say their names, but I'm sure that they will watch this later. Um, I'm very um, excited and encouraged to have some new clients and um, and the work that I'll be doing with them. Um, this is the best job on earth. Um, other than being a mom, which uh, now my son will be 25 next month. Ah, that's crazy. They grow up in a flash. So welcome, everybody. So glad you're here. Um, today I'm just doing a mix of, um, topics. Um, I want to talk about how not to react in a situation. We have a lot of conflicting sort of things going on in our world right now, right? So we have a lot of, um, I would say maybe controversial things going on, a lot of political things going on. And first of all, I don't get into politics. That's not what I'm about. Um, that's not something I ever discuss on um, my wellness site or um, professionally. So um, with that said, there is a lot of, um, I've been saying this too because I'm an observer and it just, seems to be um, perpetuating circumstances are just, you know, I would say escalating in some areas as far as people's behavior and the anxiety that are, people are having, um, just getting in your car and driving. I know I've said this before, but it's, you know, if you drive a car, you know what I'm saying. Um, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. People are struggling and, um, you know, they're in need of a lot of therapy and a lot of counseling. And unfortunately, there's a stigma with counseling. There's a stigma with therapy. You know, pardon me, I'll take one drink here. Um, I always say it's the people who are not going to counseling and not going to therapy and not dealing with their issues. Those are the people that are, you know, struggling the most. Because, you know, we can't always go to our friends or our family when we're having trials and tribulations or extra stress or, you know, whatever might be on our mind. We can't always discuss it with a friend or family member. And that's not to say that, you know, you shouldn't. You definitely can. But my point is, is our friends and family want to see us in the best light. They want to see us doing well. They want to see us happy. So when we're not doing well, you know, who do we talk to? Who do we go to? Um, I myself, I'll use myself as an example. I've done it before. I'll always use myself as an example. Um, I had therapy for years over past traumas in my life. And I don't think that I would be the person that I am today without those therapists, without the longtime counselor I had, and then eventually getting into behavioral health because I was so um, encouraged to do so. Um, and I, you know, that work was very rewarding to me. It was draining also um, because you know, you feel for every person you talk to and you feel for every person you listen to. And it's a, it's an emotional job working in mental health. Um, nonetheless, um, some of the best lessons I ever learned were in that field. And um, so who do we talk to when we have issues? And more, kind of more, um, I don't know, I, want to, I don't want to say more importantly, but um, when we have difficult situations with people, 
Like I, I expressed a situation I had, uh, I guess it's been a couple weeks ago now in public where a man completely came up and verbally assaulted me for something I had nothing to do with. And um, the only thing I said to him was, you need to learn how to behave in public. That's the pretty much the only thing I said to him. Because that's what came into my mind. Um, it wasn't, I should argue this out with this. First of all, you're not going to get anywhere with somebody who's irrational or somebody who's angry. You're not going to, nothing's going to be solved. Um, so how, how do we react in situations? I, I'm still proud of myself for reacting that way. You know, I might be a life coach. I might have all the training. I might be, you know, have the certifications and the education, but uh, I'm still human. And my first response when somebody, my first feeling when somebody is not kind to me is to throw it right back in their face a hundred times. I, I've not been dubbed the strong silent type. I'm the strong assertive and I'm going to let you know. Because, you know, who wants to be pushed around? But there's, there's a time in a place for certain things. And using myself as an example, a couple weeks ago when that man verbally assaulted me, um, that wasn't the time or the place. It didn't warrant my energy. Um, it, 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 was, it would have been futile for me. But there are situations, you know, when we've been in conflict with people and we can look back and go, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Or, hey, I should have said this, this, and this. You know, have you ever had that happen where you have a conflict with somebody and you just, you know, you maybe regret what you said, but then you think, oh, I could have said this. I could have said that. Um, not every situation warrants our uh, attention or energy. And the more non-reactive you are in situations, the better. Um, and that's not to say you shouldn't have boundaries. There's, there's a way you can excuse yourself from situations. You can, um, you can remove yourself from the situation to where it wouldn't escalate. And you can remove yourself by not engaging in the situation as well. Now I, I have, had several situations where I didn't engage in the conflict. And I find that when you don't give a response, the other person gets a mighty message when you just don't respond. So this takes practice. This is mindset. This is working on your behavior. And that, that is what we can control is our behavior. We cannot control other people. We just can't. Um, nor would I really want to control other people's behavior. That's a big job. It's like parenting. Um, I think my dad said it best. When you're a kid, your parents are like the police. You know, they... They keep you in line. They, you know, keep you following rules, et cetera. And then when you're an adult, the police have to be babysitters. Now the law is babysitting people. And then there's a lot of truth to that. There's a lot of truth to that. Um, so with that said, how can we deal with a situation by not reacting? Because, you know, we're human and a situation pops up, how, do, how are we going to deal with it? I think that one of the best definitions of grace was by Carol Mays. And she is a spiritual teacher um, that I absolutely adore. Um, and she had said the definition of grace or an example of grace would be to, you know, when you're in a conflict with somebody and you think, oh, you know what, I'm going to, and you're thinking of all kinds of maybe not so nice things, before you say those, pause for a second 
and say to yourself, do I want to say that? Because when I do, I'm not going to be able to take it back. And that's a moment of grace when you don't say what you wanted to say and you withhold it and you just keep it. That's grace. I think that is the most beautiful um, description of grace. So I think that when we're in situations where we want to react, pause, think about it. If you can pull yourself out of the heat of the moment, dial yourself down, it all it's all self-talk. It's all about self-talk. It's talking to yourself. It's, it's respecting yourself enough not to put yourself in that situation. And I'm speaking out of major experience in that. I mean, I grew up with a lot of conflict and um, I spent a lot of time by myself as a child because um, my parents were not home. They were workaholics, both of them. And I had an older brother who was busy and popular and gone a lot. And um, I was home alone a lot. I think uh, second grade, I remember coming home second grade. And what are you, like eight years old? Nowadays, you you know, CPS would be called for neglect for something like that. Um, but that's just how it was when, I mean, I wasn't the only kid. Most of the kids in my neighborhood were going home alone. Um, and when you grow up with a lot of conflict, um, you tend to not engage in it. And, um, I know my brother described me as non-confrontational one time. And the person he told that to kind of looked at me like, you're not confrontational. I mean, you know, because, well, I'm assertive, um, as a kid, I wasn't. I completely changed. And we all do. We all change. We have our basic personality. So yes, I was a spitfire as a child. I was full of it, you know, running around and personality and um, just if I, if I could describe myself, I would say just hellfire, but not getting in trouble. Just, just busy, busy, mischievous, busy. Um, definitely kept people on their toes. Uh, but you know, when you grow up in conflict, you can go one of two ways. You can keep it going or you can stop it. And, um, I know in raising my, my son, my only child, um, I definitely did not want him to grow up in conflict. Um, I had been told by a family member, several family members that I, you know, what a good job I did and, you know, raising him on my own, et cetera, being a single parent, completely on my own financially, every way you can think of single parent, just, just completely. Um, I can remember hearing, you know, what a good job I did. And, um, I know one time my brother asked me, you know, how did you do such a good job? I couldn't have done that by myself, you know raising a kid, et cetera. And I said, that's easy. I just did the opposite of, you know, what mom did with you. Just did the opposite. I mean, you just learn. And no, our parents don't have, you know, a book. Um, you know, my mom did the best she could with what she had. Um, and I can say the same for my dad. That's any parent. You know, you do the best you can with what you have. And sometimes what you have is, not, not the best, but not the best for the kid, probably, <laughs> but, you know, thankfully we all survived our childhood, um, and our adulthood is just getting over our childhood and how to move on, and that brings me right back to counseling and therapy. Um, there is a huge stigma attached to therapy and counseling, and it should be, comp it, it should be gone. There shouldn't be any stigma. A healthy person is a healthy mind and a healthy body. And so, you know, if, if, like I say all the time, they go hand in hand and if one is lacking, so is the other. 
you know, our immunities are beat down. Look at how sick people have been. Look how sick. I mean, I, I just went out the other day and I, I think it was like a choir of coughing everywhere. I wanted to dip myself in sanitizer when I got home because I was like, oh my goodness, this is terrible. People are coughing everywhere. And, you know, it could be allergies. Like I have terrible allergies. It, you know, you don't know what the cough is. Um, you know, so, but it's, you know, it's just to say that um, stress beats down your immunity and lack of sleep and poor diet and, you know, there's a host of things. So you've, you've really got to um, take the best care of yourself in whatever way you can do that in. And my belief is eating well, um, eating whole foods, um, real food, not, um, not processed. I don't eat processed food. I will not go to fast food. Um, you know, there was a time that I would, and, um, it's extremely unhealthy, extremely unhealthy. Um, I listed, um, the eight, I believe, um, omega-6 seed oils that you should avoid at all costs. That is on my timeline. I posted that the other day. I don't want to get into that because that would be another hour. And I mostly wanted to talk about mindset and how we can take care of ourselves and, you know, live a better life. And it all starts here. It all starts here. Your self-talk. How, how are you talking to yourself? And that sounds funny to some people, but think about as you go throughout your day, what you're thinking about. Think about, you know, what's going on in your mind. I was mowing the lawn the other day after, well, that's a long story, but, um, I have to say that, um, there were a lot of things going on in my head and I'll use that as an example. I'll, I'll do this really quick little excerpt or whatever. So I have a writing lawnmower. I have almost three acres. So, um, I have a riding lawnmower and I have a push mower that's self-propelled, but you have to push it a lot because there's some areas in the yard that you just can't full throttle push through. Um, so last week when I mowed and I'm the one who does all the mowing, um, I have for 22 years at this place, um, or longer, um, Last week, the tire was flat and the deck kept slipping. And it's a John Deere, but it's older. I call it a dinosaur. Um, and then this week, when I went to start it up, it had a dead battery. <laughs> so I was like, well, I mean, you know, hey, good workout. But that wasn't my first thought. My first thought was a bunch of bad words. And I wanted to kick it. And kick it and kick it and kick it with my boot. I was so mad. I was so angry because it was just, it just happened last week. Now this week, it's just like, I just want to get this done. I don't want to spend two hours mowing almost three acres of grass, you know, chew up my entire day. I had so many things to do. And I just thought, you know, and it keeps raining. I live in the Pacific Northwest. It keeps raining. You, you literally have to seize the time and get out there and mow, you know, when it's not raining. So, um, so I was a little upset and I quickly switched that off and that takes practice. You know, 10 years ago, I would have dwelled on that. I would, my whole day would have been about the mower and, I mean, I would have gone on and on all day and I, um, I practiced the mindset. I'm a mindset life coach. I have to, um, give examples and I have to walk the talk. I mean, I've got to walk that line if I'm going to be teaching it and I'm going to be, um, working with people and, um, I've, I've got to, you know, be like going to, uh, barber that didn't have any shears. I mean, what are you doing? So, um, so yeah, I was really mad. I was furious, I would say. And of course I'm home alone. So I didn't have anyone to help me with, you know, the mower. I didn't have anyone last week to help me. 
um, you know, my husband works, so he can't, he can fix anything. He can, he's very handy, but when, when he's not home, I'm kind of just sunk, you know? So, um, for some stuff I can definitely figure it out, but a dead battery, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know what to do for that. So, um, so yeah, so it's, um, so it's practice. And I've said this before, and I've written posts about this, that you have to turn it off as quick as it starts. There's kind of a 90 second uh, rule that I give myself when I start to get irritated or agitated or whatnot. I don't ever really have um, times where I'm like, oh, I'm just not going to be able to do this. I don't think I'm good enough. I don't feel like that. I mean, I'm extremely confident. Um, and there's a difference between confidence and cockiness. There's a huge difference. Um, I'm very confident in my abilities. I'm extremely confident in what I know. And I execute what I know. Uh, education is worthless unless you educate it. I mean, unless you execute it, excuse me. So um, I am educated. I'm self-educated. Um, I've obviously certified for life coaching. Um, I've done many things um, in my life. And um, I went to just community college. Um, nothing fancy. Uh, my son went to Western Washington University. Uh, you always want better for your kids. And um he's extremely bright and he's a computer science major with a minor in uh, philosophy and math. And he works at Microsoft as a software development engineer. And um, I'm extremely proud of that. One of the reasons that I'm extremely proud of that, and I know I'm kind of going off my subject a little bit, but um, one of the reasons that I'm extremely proud of that is that I was a single parent with no help. And what I, what I mean is no financial help, no emotional support, whatever you want to call it. Um, I worked full time. I had a child who had um, uh, sensory issues. If people out there with sensory issue children, you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's a wide spectrum. So without going into a lot of detail, a child with sensory issues is a huge challenge, especially for a single parent. And I didn't have parents around the corner to drop them off or I, you know, there just wasn't, I didn't have that available, which was fine. I enjoyed my time with my son. Uh, I would rather be with him than drop him off somewhere. But um, just to say, um, one of the reasons I'm so proud that he is educated and has a good career and he's not even 25 yet um, is because I, I did that on my own. I sacrificed because that's what, um, that's what parents need to do for their kids. You, you know, your life is pretty much on hold when you have that kid. You, your life is now that child. You know, there's some people that live for their, their children and there's some people that just kind of have kids and go through life and don't really put their kids first. I always put my kid first. And I would do it again. I would do it again in a heartbeat. My son was my number one priority. Not a boyfriend, not not friends, not, not family. He He was number one. So I, I'm always going to be extremely proud that he's educated and has a very good career. And he is a fine young man. Um, and, you know, I just, that's my greatest achievement in life is being a mom. And, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure I made mistakes along the way too. Every parent does. Um, and I ask him and he's always so nice. He always says, no, mom, you did a good job. <laughs> I'm like, 
I mean, I think one time he said I was too safety conscious. And I was like, well, you know what? If that's the only thing that you got on me is that I was too safety conscious, you know, that says something. But I'm sure there's other stuff, you know. No one's perfect and that word doesn't exist in uh, real life. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I really wanted to talk about mindset and talking about, you know, um, how we can better serve ourselves by our own behavior and still having boundaries and still exerting boundaries because boundaries are essential. Boundaries are essential. The reason that people behave a certain way like a friend or family member is because they feel that they can towards you when you put a boundary up in whatever situation that is and maybe you start saying no maybe you're not going to be a people pleaser for that person you're going to say no you're going to make a lot of people upset and that is okay we have no responsibility how someone else feels when we put up a boundary for self-care and self-respect. If that's not accepted by the other person, you might want to reevaluate that friendship or boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it is. Um, you have to have boundaries. And, you know, we're all grown-ups. We know what boundaries are. They're either asserted or they're not. And then you have to find out why, if you're not asserting them, why. So next week, I'm going to go into a little bit more on um, nutrition. I feel that the mindset videos are getting a lot more traffic than the health and nutrition, which is fine. Um, I do want to nag you about the water. Drink your water. I do a lot of um, supplementation. That's totally up to you. I might get into that next week a little bit on certain supplements that are very helpful for sleep in particular. Um, there's some really good supplements that are, uh, I like to go the natural path um, versus, you know, I don't know, like a sleeping pill. Those I, I say no to those. Um, so I'm going to go into that next week because our sleep is extremely vital to our overall health. And um, I know that being over a certain age, I will be 49 next month. Um, and I'm not sad about that. I'm happy. I'm with every year is new knowledge, new wisdom, uh, a new sense of myself and happiness. And, and the older you get, the more accepting you are of yourself and your faults and things of that nature. So um, I say growing older is a gift. I don't, I don't have any issues with it. Um, but over a certain age, ladies, we have the perimenopause. And I might do a video just on that for the ladies out there because it is, it's information that I don't think a lot of people, um, a lot of women are privy to. And um, so I've got some really good topics for next week. And I don't think that the video will be this long, but I, this is the first one I've done all week. So I had a lot going on that I wanted to talk about. So I hope that you made it to the end of this video. I know not everybody does. Um, you know, I say, if you're on a lunch break or, you know, you can always watch this video later. It is taped live, but you can always watch it later. You can watch it in increments. Um, and hopefully, hopefully my goal always is to help somebody, help somebody understand or have something that I said resonate with you. Um, I really do care about the community that is being built. I care about my clients. I care about all of you. And, and I really want to get messages out that can be helpful. 
So I thank you for listening. I will see you next week and I will have more topics next week as well. For today, think of three things you're grateful for. Get outside, breathe that fresh air, get some water, and think about your positive self-talk and um, self-care. Think about something you can do for yourself this weekend, just for yourself. That would make you happy. All right, so take care, everybody. And thank you so much for being here.